Welcome to Monday Thursday Tenebrae service. Tonight's gathering is a time for communion, reflection, and reliving the night of Jesus' last meal with his disciples through the moment of his betrayal and arrest. Our readings, therefore, are taken primarily from the gospel and the perspective of John. It was God's command to the people of Israel to have meals and moments of remembrance throughout the year to commemorate significant times in their history so that they would never forget the depth of meaning that those moments held. This is one of those moments. Welcome. Now, the festival of unleavened bread, called the Passover, was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how he might betray Jesus. They were delighted and agreed to give him money. He consented and watched for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when the crowd wasn't present. When the day of Passover came, Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it, they asked. As you enter the city, he replied, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks where the guest room is, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you to a large room upstairs, all furnished and ready. Make preparations there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover.
When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve and reclined at the table. Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin. Jesus began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, those who have had a bath need only to wash their feet. Their whole body is clean. And you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. And that was why he said, not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked them. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. And now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent them. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow me later. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. They became very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. 
Jesus replied, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. Then Judas, the one who would betray him said, surely you don't mean me, rabbi. Jesus answered, it is as you say. I'd like to take just a moment to briefly reflect on what was happening here. Jesus knew that his life was in danger and that this might be the last meal that he would share with his friends. Those that had, as he put it in one gospel, stayed with him to the end. Many of his followers loved his ministry until it cost them something, at which point they left. But not these twelve and a few others. They were his closest, dearest, most intimate companions who had shared not only time and travels with him, but passion, purpose, drive, reflection, and a commitment to each other, as well as to the God that sent Jesus to them. These were the ones he was preparing to say goodbye to, along with the one who, in all ways fit the description I just gave, would turn his back on Jesus in the most horrific way and betray him to the Roman soldiers and the Jewish religious leaders. They were already eating and drinking when he interrupted the dinner and their conversation and inaugurated what has become our ceremony ritual of the Eucharist, Tonight, we will do our best to reenact that moment here and so relive that moment, the final sharing of bread and wine between Jesus and his followers.
The passage continues. While they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup and poured the wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Then Jesus said, From this point on, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, in this manner do it remembering me. For it is written, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and I tell you that this must be fulfilled in me. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Peter replied, Even if all the others fall away on account of you, I never will. I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. After they had eaten and sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. 
stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, he said, everything is possible for you. Therefore, take this cup from me. Yet, not what I will, but what you will. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once more he went away and prayed the same thing. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. They did not know what to say. Returning the third time, he said to them, are you still sleeping and resting? The hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise and let us go, for here comes my betrayer. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden. He and his disciples went into it.
Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. And while Jesus was still speaking, Judas arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Judas then approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus asked him, Are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? But Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. And then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. Jesus' followers saw what was happening. They said, Lord, should we strike with our swords? With that, one of Jesus' companions reached out for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it must happen this way? Then Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place, that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. And this is your hour when darkness reigns. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled.
hand washing ritual and partaking of the Lord's table this evening. If you would like to participate in either or both practices, you will be asked in a moment to, beginning with the front rows, uh, line up in the outer side aisles. If you would like to have your foot washed, please come up and take a seat in the front rows here on either side and take off one shoe. We will hold it over the basin and pour water over it, offer a blessing, and then dry your foot. You'll be then free to stand and take communion in the center aisle and then return to your seat that way. For those not wanting your foot to be washed but would like to partake in communion, simply walk up the side aisles and around those waiting for the foot washing and come directly to those serving the communion elements. Then you may return to your seat. For the hand washing option station, please come to the baptismal font in the center of the room and offer your hands. Moira will pour some water over, over them and then offer a short blessing. Then you may take a paper towel, dry your hands, and put the towel in the wastebasket. You may then either leave in silence or return to your seat and remain there for a time of silent meditation. And now for those that wish, please come forward. First, we will serve our servers. <clears throat> 